Hello everyone, James George with Creative Beacon again, and this week I'm going to show you Path Blur inside of Photoshop. Now Path Blur is a new feature that they just integrated into the, to the new uh, Adobe Photoshop CC 2014 update. And I kind of like it, and I'm going to show you how uh, you can use it in a practical application. So. You've got uh, this mountain range here, and it looks like you've got some ice, and uh, there's some water here, and let's just say that you wanted to add sort of a steamy effect to it, and you wanted it to match the contour of uh, this little alcove here, this circular alcove. So what uh, you can do is with the new and i've been waiting for this for a while i think this is great instead of using liquify which you don't have you you never really had a lot of control over to the extent that path blur gives you so I, i'm really excited for this feature so uh, create a new layer and a couple of days ago i created a uh, collection of 20 smoke brushes so what you can do is download those brushes and I'm going to use uh, this one right here and now it's it's lowered the size is lower than normal but that's because I made it to fit this image I, I used the open bracket and close bracket keys to resize it to where it fits within the image And so you just click here and then we'll use the eraser tool just hit the E key and we'll kind of clean up some edges so that it's okay to use this in the middle here and we're just using the erase tool at a hundred percent with uh, hardness down to zero so you can erase some of the harder edges and sort of blend things away so once you have that hit command T to transform and we're just going to rotate so that this fits the the uh, the middle cur of the curve of this little alcove here we'll hit enter so then we're going to go up to filter going to go to Blur Gallery, Path Blur. You have, uh, you know, your basic blur and rear sync flash. The thing I like about this the most is the fact that you can determine where it's going to start and where it's going to stop. And these points just control that. You can see here that uh, when you pull this out, it adjusts the endpoint speed or how how much it fades at this point. And you can change the contour uh, using the middle. Uh, anchor point here and so I'm gonna I'm just gonna pull it forward and do a little bit of a bend I'm gonna pull this forward and we're gonna pull this out a little bit and you can see as you're doing that it sort of just does this wave effect with the steam now you know you might say well this is a little too harsh for my effect you know for my purpose or what I'm trying to accomplish well that's fine because once you do this and you're just pulling points here and remember this increases how much it blurs in the direction you see as I pull this away it makes this go out this way so it really just is dependent on how you want the effect 
and you get this sort of rolling steam effect that let's say a, a little bit of the tide comes in and you just get this the water's warmer than the ice and so it sort of just you get this little bit of steam or condensation that goes in the air once you're done with this you just hit OK at the top and you can see it's working progress this is sort of a uh, heavy feature for uh, RAM but I have 16 gigs of RAM in a MacBook Pro so that's that tells you that if you have anything less than that it may take a minute to process now once you've done this if this is too harsh you can either lower the opacity of the layer which you can see here or you can also change the blend mode to something like soft light and you can see that it's you know that may be too much so you know it really just depends on what you're trying to get but you get this sort of wispy uh, condensation or, or mist effect I'll just lower the opacity to about 40 something percent and it follows the basic shape of this edge coming in here and there's your effect I think it's pretty neat and if, if you want to go further you could also hit trans uh, command T to transform then right click on it and you can do warp and you could also warp this around so that it fits that edge even more. And there you go. And so it all sort of just goes around this little edge here and sort of just fades off into the landscape. That's just one example of uh, the cool stuff that you can do with the new Path Blur filter. That's it for this week. I'm James George, and this is Creative Beacon.